Hey everyone, Fuseman coming at ya. A couple weeks back, I put out this video regarding that Triforce of Technologies to fight off censorship when it comes to app stores and just generally putting out content. And literally the day before, Steam went ahead and chose to ban cryptocurrencies and NFTs as kind of technologies that are allowed to be included in games that are deployed on their platform which I think just specifically speaks to the need to build out censorship resistant ways to deploy games. And I didn't have a chance to touch on that topic in the video because I typically end up recording videos a couple weeks in advance, but I, I, I think I just wanted to spend a couple of minutes here today to just briefly go over that. Would be curious to know what you think down in the comments below and would love to see you also over on Discord where you can chat with myself and the rest of the community. In case you missed it, just really quick summary that Steam has updated their distribution policies that specifically provide guidelines around what you can and shouldn't publish on the Steam store. And when they updated that, they updated it with a new line item where they specifically say you should not publish on Steam applications built on blockchain technology that issue or allow exchange of cryptocurrencies or NFTs. And when they did that, that caused quite a few blockchain games to get banned from the store. And more specifically, typically that you'd see a message like on Age of Rust that said that the de developer quote unquote chose to leave Steam. And by chose, they mean that they chose not to get rid of their cryptocurrency tie-ins. Couple things to point out here just about the verbiage. It's funny because it's done in such a way that you actually could still use blockchains to some degree within your own applications. And that as long as it's not tied to a cryptocurrency or an NFT, that you could, you could leverage blockchain as a technology. What does that mean? That specifically means if you're looking at smart contracts and really uh, just functionality that might not necessarily be tied to financial motivation. Why is this a problem? Well, fundamentally, of course, Steam is well within their rights as a private company to choose to control what they put through their store, right? I think we, we can all agree as a private company, uh, you should be able to control what you can and can't do with your business. Uh, but at the same time, as a move for the future of the ecosystem, it really, I think, is, it's gonna be a kind of a black stain, if you will, for, for Steam, in my opinion. And that, I think, blockchains and NFTs, or not even just NFTs, but the NFT movement, I think really encapsulate why there's a need to add ownership and players control through the blockchain when it comes to dealing with games. I think that the best analogy that I hear for NFTs is, is it fundamentally comes down to thinking of this as being able to own a part of the game as you did own a part of the game when you bought trading cards and really kind of thinking of NFTs as, as the, the digital equivalent of trading cards where you actually own it and you can use it in a wide variety of different manners that are independent of the game. It is digitally owned, not tied to the game and can be transferred and leveraged outside of the game's ecosystem. And that I think is just a powerful idea when it comes to uh, being able to actually purchase and actually own something. I've, I've said this multiple times, even before NFTs were a thing, that when it comes to the freemium or like free to play models of games, I've always really kind of hated that issue in that it, it's basically tied to you paying for something that you don't really ever claim ownership over. It's the same reason why I've always found it funny that if I have the ability to purchase a physical copy of a game versus a digital copy of the game, with the physical copy, I'm allowed to resell it because I own the game. The digital copy, I have no rights or ownership over that game. And it's, I think, really a fundamental flaw of 
how digital distribution and app stores work, where as an individual, you have no legal authority and ownership over your digital software. And NFTs really come to the rescue in that capacity to help solve that by allowing you to have that ownership in a decentralized, trustless fashion. And so in my mind, it's really a shame that someone would try to go out of their way to prevent players from actually being in control of their gaming experience. I, th I think it's really a shame because it, it disincentivizes developers from finding new revenue opportunities and for giving that control to players, which I think is really necessary to move gaming into, I think, an even greater state where players can can start building out really these kind of digital metaverses in a sense where I can take assets and move things around. And I think that's an incredibly powerful tool. Epic, of course, recognizes this in that they, they put out, Tim Sweeney put out his own set of tweets that NFTs and blockchain are not banned from their store, which I'm glad someone at least recognizes. Of course, Epic doesn't feel comfortable with using the technology, which I can totally respect and get behind. But I think that, that that's kind of the key difference. The difference between mandating something versus being open and trying to make the e ecosystem grow in a safe and deregulated way. And sure, one of the arguments that people have against it, of course, is that there are scams. And the reality is, sure, but there are scams in several different avenues of, of technology. I mean, if you just look at Kickstarter, there are countless scams that where people are asking for money and then they don't deliver on products. And I think NFTs kind of just fall in that same category that I, I think it's a really a question of do you trust people enough to be informed to make their own decisions and and based on that make if if they kind of can build something healthy out of it great if if scams do happen they happen right um and then it's up to us as a community right to make sure that people have the right information when they are making these choices and I think that's just incredibly important and and, and necessary um, in a very open ecosystem, just like in the web. There are countless scams on the web. And as a community, I think there are many people that are working to put out more and more information about these scams and limit the ramifications of it. I think that that that's just the reality of it. And I, I, I think you really have to ask the question, is it only scams that are happening with this or is a lot of positive work being done that could ultimately build out a very healthy, powerful ecosystem? And I personally err to that latter part where I think with an open ecosystem with transparent information that everyone has access to, you can build out incredibly powerful ecosystems that are financially beneficial for players that are financially beneficial for developers and can can build out connections between games in in ways that we've never seen before and i think that's really really exciting that's it i just wanted to document some thoughts here and just make sure that this piece of news was captured on the channel again let me know if you have any questions or thoughts down in the comments below and happy to keep chatting about these topics and sharing more and more exciting stuff happening in blockchain, VR, and web. So thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. It's been Fuse Man and I'm signing out.